Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to be taking a look at these O2 sensor or oxygen sensor extenders and see if they really work. Let's go ahead and get started. Now a lot of people might ask, well, why would you even need to use something like this, like an extender for an O2 sensor? And this pertains mainly if you're getting a P0420 code on your vehicle. Um, if you live in a state like I do that has vehicle inspections or if you have the emissions inspections, if you have that code on or any other um, engine code, you will fail the inspection. The P0420 code pertains to your, the efficiency in your catalyst system. A lot of times people say, oh, your catalytic converter needs to be replaced. That's not always the case. It just means that the catalytic converter's efficiency is below what the ECU for that vehicle um, is expecting it to be. That can be caused by the catalytic converter being bad and needing to be replaced, or it could be dirty, needing to be clean. It could also be your O2 sensors as well. And what it does, you have two O2 sensors. You have an upstream and a downstream. If you want to see a video I did where I go more in depth as far as the upstream, downstream, all that stuff, what they do in terminology, you can check it out via the link above. I'll also have it down in the description with some other videos pertaining to this video. But basically, you have your upstream O2 sensor. When the exhaust gases come out of the engine, they hit that one first. Then they pass through the catalytic converter. Then there's one which is called the downstream, which is after the catalytic converter. That one also measures as well. So anytime if the O2 sensors are giving the same reading to the computer, to your ECU, you'll get that code as well because it means that the catalytic converter didn't do its job as the gas has passed through it. Where these little guys here come in handy is if you live in a state like I do that has the vehicle inspections and you have the P0420 or any of the other catalyst system efficiency related codes, they can be tricky to diagnose. Now, the first thing you want to do before you try to bypass it with one of these is you want to make sure that you fixed a problem. You know, if the catalytic converter needs to be cleaned or replaced or the O2 sensors need to be cleaned or replaced, do that as well. Um, do that first because you obviously don't want to be bypassing things that are important for your vehicle because it is illegal not to get those things fixed, which is why you will fail your, um, your emissions. Now, some states, California, very picky with that stuff, and I, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that the catalytic converters there are even more sensitive to the pollutants coming through than, than in the other states as well. Here's the thing, though. You can pick these little guys up for five bucks a piece. Uh, you can get a set of, of two of them for ten bucks, or you can buy one for five dollars. Replacing a catalytic converter can be thousands of dollars. Not everybody's got that money laying around to replace that. So I would highly recommend fixing the problem first. If it's not in your budget, and obviously if you have one vehicle and it needs to be inspected or you can't get the, the registration renewed, then take this route here. Um, you know, you're not going to take a loan out if the car is running fine just for the sake of the emissions laws, which in some states are ridiculous. So that's where I would recommend this. The car that we're going to be looking at in this video, I've already replaced the catalytic converter and the O2 sensors. It's still giving the code. It's due for an inspection coming up. And unless I want to waste tons of time trying to diagnose the thing, it's going to probably run past the date and the tags are going to expire, which is why we're going to try this next. And the reason I'm in this position is because I purchased an aftermarket catalytic converter. Aftermarket catalytic converters are a few hundred bucks. If you buy the actual manufacturer one, they can be a few thousand bucks. So what I've been told, though, is that the ECUs on the vehicle, sometimes they are set to work strictly with the manufacturer one as far as the sensitivity of that. And if you put an aftermarket one in that's not right on point, you'll still get that code, which is what I'm running into right now. I have an aftermarket one that went in. The car's running excellent. That code still comes on and off, on and off, on and off. So that's why I'm like, okay, before I dig in any further and put more time and money in it, let me just do a video and see if this will work. So let's get a close up here and I'll show you how simple these things go together. This is what they look like. You have a little hole here on one end, and then you have a threaded piece on this end. Your O2 sensor will screw in here to the threaded end. This threaded end on the extender will go into the exhaust pipe where normally your O2 sensor would go in. They make different ones. This one here is a longer one. They make some that are a little bit shorter. They make some with meshes on the end as shown here. I went with the longer one because I figured let's get it completely out of it. So. Here's an O2 sensor. We'll bring this around here so you can see it. So here's our O2 sensor. 
Take this off so you can see it. So normally your O2 sensor right here screws into your exhaust pipe so that way the head of it is so your here's your exhaust pipe let's say it's right here so it screws right in here the head of this is now inside the exhaust pipe so that way the exhaust gases can hit it and go through these little holes so it can get a reading and here's what it looks like when it's screwed in So the way that it works is that this now would screw into the exhaust pipe and then this screws on like this. So now the head of the O2 sensor is inside the shaft here. And then if you see it in there, you can see the tip. This is now in the exhaust pipe. So as the exhaust gases are passing, you're getting a little bit going in there because you do need to be getting a reading, otherwise you will get an O2 sensor code on your car. So you don't want to bypass the O2 sensor. So what this does is it allows the gases to still come through, so the O2 sensor will get a reading on the downstream. But you're not getting the full-blown exhaust hitting it, so you're diminishing the reading, and therefore you're not giving the code that the catalyst efficiency is below the threshold. Now one thing to keep in mind some people will say, oh, I've used these, they didn't work, and I put it on the, on the O2 sensors. These don't go on the sensors, plural. They only go on the sensor. You only want it on the downstream, not the upstream. The upstream sensor needs to be completely intact, functioning properly. That way it will register the, the gases coming through properly to the ECU. It's on the downstream one that you want to take the O2 sensor and back it out of the exhaust pipe. So that way it's still getting a reading to communicate back to the ECU, but it's diminishing the reading and therefore showing that the catalyst system was working properly or that the catalytic converter did its job um, cleaning out all the, uh, all the pollutants coming through like it's supposed to. So you have your upstream sensor. And if you're looking at it on a chart, um, if you have it connected to uh, your um, uh, OBD2 scan tool, and I'm going to show you in a minute what it should look like. Your upstream should always be very erratic because it's getting all the readings. The one on the back end, the downstream after the catalytic converter, should be stable. That's how a perfect reading should be. When those both are getting erratic movement or they're matching, that's when you have the issue. So you want your upstream to still be reading all the all the stuff coming out of the exhaust system um, from the um, manifold. But on the tail end, you want to back it out so that way it's now getting stable, showing that it's all been cleaned up before it goes out to the muffler and the tailpipe. But here's a look right here of the difference between the upstream and the downstream, how they look on an actual graph. You want to start by letting everything heat up to 600 degrees or hotter to generate a really good signal. But if we look here on this scan tool, the ones up top, those are our downstream O2 sensors on bank one and bank two. And then the lower graphs are the upstream O2 sensors in bank one and bank two. You can see the erratic movement on the upstream and the nice steady line on the down. All right. So now with that done, we're going to take this one here. We're going to head over to the vehicle. I'm going to show you how to install it. We're going to put it on it and then we're going to try the vehicle. And um, what I forgot to say so far is the vehicle that we're dealing with failed the, the uh, inspection. So here's the, the failure notice that we got when it went for its state inspection here in Delaware where I live. You can see the overall result there is a fail. And if we look here under the diagnostic trouble codes, you can see right there P0420. In addition, check engine light is on on the vehicle, letting us know there's an issue. So we'll connect it here to my scan tool. Go ahead and run it. As it's going through the codes, we can see one already popped up there, which is the P0420. But we'll let it finish running its course to 100%, make sure that there's no other issues here with the codes. And we're almost done there, but P0420, catalyst system efficiency below threshold. So we're going to put this on the vehicle, get it all set up. We're going to take it back and see how it does passing, but we were getting the P0420. So let's head over to the vehicle and put it on. Start by removing your downstream O2 sensor. Make sure you disconnect the harness as well so the wires don't get all twisted up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our extender 
and we're going to go ahead and thread that into that same port where we removed the downstream O2 sensor. So let's go ahead and screw that in place. And once we have that in, then we'll go ahead and take our downstream O2 sensor, reinstall it, going in through the extender here. And you can see how it looks there all together, how it's pushing it out. Next, we'll come along and we're going to tighten our extender, get it nice and tight and snug. There we go. And then now we're going to feed the O2 sensor and get that tightened. But we're going to pull the harness all the way down because this is going to be getting spun around. We don't want it getting all tightened up. And you can see there the access. I have a heat shield, but you want to make sure that you don't get that crimped or squashed up. We'll tighten that up real good as well. So we're tightening the O2 sensor into the extender. Get that nice and solid. And that's how it should look. The extender, the O2 sensor, all tightened up into the exhaust. There you go. And now we'll come up here to the other end and reconnect our harness. Make sure everything is connected nice and solid. All right, now that everything is on, we're going to take it down to the inspection center here um, near where I live, and we're going to take it and see if it passes, and then I'll be back so we can review the results with you and wrap up this video. After I installed the extender, I cleared the engine code so we had a clear slate, so you can see no engine code is on, and I had my diagnostic reader tracking the vehicle as we were driving it to make sure it went through a proper engine cycle. You can see some of the components have completed, still some other ones incomplete. And as we're driving more, you can see the catalyst did pass right there, complete and green, but still a couple other ones. Light is still out, and we're getting ready to arrive soon. And you can see everything has been completed, so we should pass this test. Everything is green and completed now. So let's head in there to the inspection facility here, and let's see what happens. Here's the results, and you can see, passed. Everything's good. All right, well, there you saw it. This little thing right here, a $5 piece that anyone can do. All you need to do is locate your downstream O2 sensor, or if you have two banks, O2 sensors, you want it on, on the downstream one or two sensors. Five bucks a piece. All you do is unscrew your O2 sensor, put this in its place, and then screw your O2 sensor into this. And as you saw right here, we had a P0420 code that was causing us to fail. We had replaced the catalytic converter, we replaced the O2 sensors, but as I mentioned, I did put an aftermarket catalytic converter. Even tried some catalytic converter cleaners, different things, which sometimes do work. If you want to see different product reviews, I'll have them down in the description. But adding this little guy right here solved the problem. So if you're in a situation where you've already done the work to your vehicle, as mentioned already, you do want to fix the problems. You don't want to bypass those. But if you're at kind of a a point right here where you're scratching your head, you've done all that you can, you don't know what else to do, and you need to get a vehicle inspected, I would give these guys right here a try. As we saw, this thing worked great. I was a little reluctant at first, but it worked perfect. So I hope that this video was informative for you, helped you out with maybe any issues you're having passing your emissions test, and it's pertaining to the catalyst system. Um, so please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. Please like the video, subscribe to this channel, I'll see you next time.